happy Wednesday. How are you today? How is your week going? I'm so glad to see you and so glad to be here with you for our weekly style snack. If you're new here, my name is April and every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, I go live and share a style snack with you. And um, it's fun. My favorite part is at the end and um, we get to chat. So go ahead and leave your comments and questions for me and we'll discuss at the end. Today, I want to talk about how to build a capsule wardrobe that still looks like you in six easy steps. Do you truly love your wardrobe? Like that's a question, a valid question to ask yourself because I do now, but I didn't. It felt more like a jungle than a closet as I forced the tightly packed clothes apart every morning, swatting away the store tags still hanging from too many of them, like mosquitoes buzzing around my face and mopped my brow inside, I needed a machete. Instead of facing the dread of digging through the hangers to find something I didn't really want to wear, I abandoned the expedition and turned to the pile of those tops I didn't hate as much and could easily grab again. In a world of fast fashion and trends that come and go even faster, it's easy to accumulate too many clothes that don't communicate our individual style, and then we feel guilty getting rid of them. Decision fatigue is a crisis, and the daunting task of a daily jungle excursion to get dressed is enough to make you stay in your pajamas every day. A few years ago, I decided I was tired of the closet full of overwhelm, and I decided to learn how to build a capsule wardrobe. I loved the idea of the curated closet full of pieces that I loved, and that's when the closet purging began. It was multiple uh, attempts. <laughs> it, it took several, several times to really uh, purge honestly and get rid of what I truly did not love. So what makes capsule wardrobes so amazing? Well, my closet, drawers and overall life are less cluttered. Getting dressed in the morning involves less guesswork and less time. I can get ready in 20 minutes if I stay focused <laughs> and it doesn't require a single machete. Everything goes together and best of all, no matter what I put on, it'll be something I really love and carefully, selectively intentionally included in my wardrobe and not just something I bought on clearance and now feel obligated to wear at least once because that's what my wardrobe was before. It was the clearance rack. That's it. If I found it on the clearance rack and it was too good of a deal to pass up, that was what I brought home. But then again, capsule wardrobes can seem a little restrictive and boring. Where's the personality? Where's the flair? Where are you? It can be pretty daunting to imagine narrowing down the pieces you wear, especially when your closet is currently overflowing with options. And I know that's what some of you are thinking. More is better, but more is not always better. And even more daunting, it can be to think that you might disappear into a one style fits all uniform of neutral basics that don't tell your style story. One of maybe the most famous fashion quotes is by Rachel Zoe and she says, style is a way of saying who you are without having to speak. I mean, no one can put it better than that. And it's so true. So I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Capsule wardrobes are not a one style fits all concept. Putting together a capsule wardrobe doesn't mean you have to suddenly only wear one color and toss out all your shoes, shun all prints, and go spend hundreds of dollars on a bunch of items 
you'd never pick out otherwise, all in the name of a concept that's equal parts alluring and frightening. Creating a capsule wardrobe really means shopping your closet before the stores, refining your individual style so that you shine through in every piece and every outfit, thoughtfully choosing pieces you really love, and simplifying your life. And as long as you follow a few simple steps, it doesn't have to be scary. So I have um, loved having a curated closet. And one of what has become one of the jokes in this community is anytime someone tells me they love something I'm wearing, I say, thank you. It's one of my favorites because they are all my favorites. And that's exactly the way it should be. So how do you build a capsule wardrobe that still looks like you? Well, you put together one that really rings true to you and your individual style. So the first step is to figure out your signature style. First, think about your favorite pieces of clothing in your closet and not the ones that are just easy to grab because they're at the top of the pile. The ones that uh, you absolutely feel amazing in, your go-tos, your wardrobe workhorses, your laundry basket regulars, they can be that. Do you gravitate toward timeless classic looks or do you feel the most comfortable um, in tailored minimal pieces? Maybe you crave an element of playfulness and um, fun in each outfit. Maybe you love a look that strikes a an edgy balance. And maybe your, your wardrobe needs to keep up with your active lifestyle or reflect the softness about you. If you feel like your closet represents the clearance section rejects you scooped up only for the thrill of the deal, instead of showcasing the real you, consider that for the same amount of money, you could have spent more per item on fewer things that you truly love and would love to wear, rather than a closet full of things you don't wear and definitely don't love. Quantity is not always better. So if you're not sure what your style is, it's easy to admire what you like on someone else instead of what actually suits you. And I personally made that mistake for years. It's a lot easier to build a capsule wardrobe once that you love, once you already have a vision of who you are. And I have tools to help you do that. I have a classic style, a twist quiz that you can take and um, articles all about the twists. And they're not the only styles out there. There are plenty of others. They're just ones that I happen to have written about. And chances are, if you are part of my community, you're drawn to a lot of those same things too. My signature style is usually a combination of neutrals, black, white, brown, flax, and blue. Blue feels like a neutral to me. It's always been my favorite color. And then I'll add a pop of color, usually red or pink. And burgundy. I need a core of minimal classic items with some edgy details added in. And I've learned, um, I've, I've known my signature color palette because I observed in my outfits what I was constantly wearing over and over again. I like green. I don't wear it a lot. It's not a color I'm constantly drawn to, but I do like it and I wear it sometimes. I like orange and it's more of a seasonal preference for me. It's not a year round go-to constant staple. I'm not drawn to yellow. I never have been. It's just not a color I wear. Not because it doesn't look good on me. There is, There are versions of yellow that look good on me. Just It's just not my color. I just really crave certain colors. And now that I know what those are, I 
know where to invest my money. The next tip is to start with the basics. This is one of my very favorite topics. <laughs> start with your basics and fill in the details that let your style shine through. Don't let foundation wardrobe staples scare or bore you before you start. Basics are literally the foundation of every wardrobe, but especially a capsule wardrobe. They're called foundational pieces for a reason because they are a basic framework to build upon. Foundation pieces hold up and support and frame the rest of your outfit. Frame those special pieces. Flour, water, and salt on their own seem boring, but um, they're the beginning of every bread and pastry out there. A lot of them, the only next ingredient is yeast and it's delicious. Basics don't have to be blah. When I was learning how to build a capsule wardrobe, my biggest concern was that I would be bored or that my outfits would be too vanilla. And well, the truth is I kind of like boring. I mean, the boring is kind of my favorite. That's just my personal style, but it doesn't have to be. It can be as vibrant and interesting as you want it to be because it's all about you. The third tip is to choose a color palette and stick to it. And I don't mean choosing two colors for your whole wardrobe. That's what a lot of capsule wardrobe um, how to's recommend. And that is, I mean, that's the way you can do it, but a successful capsule wardrobe does not have to avoid color altogether. And sticking to just two colors can make it really boring. The secret is to choose a cohesive color palette that's flattering on you. Look for colors that work both with the current season and your own coloring. So um, you can choose to, there are so many different ways out there to, to uh, figure out your best colors. There's seasonal color analysis. I'm a winter. I was draped as a winter when I was seven or eight years old my, because my mom was really into coloring me beautiful. So I've always known my best colors and you're typically drawn to your most flattering colors. You can get private, you know, personal consultations that will give you a completely um, customized color palette. There are just so many different ways to do it, but it's out there. And I, everything in my wardrobe is extremely cohesive because I stick to my color palette. All the colors in my wardrobe harmonize perfectly, which means I can wear just about anything I own together. And I don't have to limit the colors in my capsule wardrobe. Once you know your color palette, you'll know what colors you should be filling your closet with from now on and everything will go together. The fourth tip is to shop your closet. Now that you know what you love and what colors you look best in, head straight to your closet first. Absolutely always every time. And this is something we talk about in the Stunning Style Society. Each season when I release the new um, seasonal wardrobe guides, you know, it it comes with all the all the things, links to all the things that I have found for the season, right? But um, the very first thing I talk about is shop your closet. Shop your closet first. Always shop your closet first. Stick to your budget. I shop my closet first. And in fact, style step number two is I shop my closet for the current season and show them how I am substituting. Because I don't go out and buy a new wardrobe every season. I don't want to, and I get a lot of money. <laughs> I love what I already have, and so I'm just gonna wear that instead. Look for pieces you already have that express your personal style and make you feel great, look great. 
choose pieces you'd be happy to wear on a regular basis. Look for clothing that goes well with your designated color palette. And if it works with your palette, it'll work with everything else. Find clothes that express you instead of stifle you. And here's a hint. If you have items you put on and immediately take off, they're not right for you. They're not your style for one reason or another. And that has been a variety of things for me over the years that were trending that I loved to look at. And I loved how they looked on other women. And so I thought I would love how I looked in them. And it wasn't that I looked bad in them. They just weren't me. Fit and flare skirts, I, 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 I adore them on others. But I feel like a five-year-old when I put them on, I bought several. And I never once left my closet wearing one. I put it on and I would immediately take it off. It was so cute for someone else. I was admiring it on someone else. Now I know they're all wrong for me. And no matter how tempted I am by them because they look so good on other people, I know not to even consider them because I just won't wear them. It's not me, but it might be perfect for you. And that's where we get to customize everything. The fifth tip I have for you is to know what your twist is or twists are, because most of us are a combination of multiple. I've written about uh, cute classic, edgy classic, minimal classic, soft classic, and sporty classic or active classic, and you could be preppy classic, boho classic. Um, and there's so many, so many variations. Quirky classic, those are just five that I have written about. But knowing what the style is, or at least even if you don't have a name for it, know what the elements are, what you're looking for, and, um, and find items that actually reflect those elements. And you're probably a combination. Um, like preppy classic is actually a combination of minimal, cute, and active. So it just happened, that particular recipe happens to have an identifiable name. Yours may not, it doesn't have to have a name, it just has to be you. And look for the details that will tell your style story. Your wardrobe basics don't have to be basic. A classic striped tee can have leather trim if you're edgy or a peplum hem if you love a cute classic look or a cowl neck if you, or if you're more of a soft classic detail. It could come in um, a moisture wicking fabric if you're active. And if you're minimal classic, well, it's already a timeless look that um, could be perfect for you. So tip number six is to fill in the rest. Assess what you already have, right? Shop your closet, narrow it down, get rid of anything that doesn't really make your heart sing and function in your wardrobe, and then figure out what's missing. Do you have a lot of tops and only one good pair of pants that work for the season, fit well and look great on you? Well, then that's a hole in your wardrobe that needs filling and you know what to look for. Do most of your shoes sit untouched or make you feel meh or they're uncomfortable or they don't work with your lifestyle? For whatever reason, they just don't get worn. Then you need some shoes that really do function in your wardrobe on all levels, especially for shoes. They need to work with your lifestyle and work with your wardrobe and work with your needs. They need to be comfortable, comfortable to you. So do you have a few go-to accessories you love and could wear with most outfits? If not, a few, just a, one or two accessories can just really make an outfit. So figure out what's missing from your capsule wardrobe and make a shopping list. That does not mean you have to go out and get it all right now. 
always stick to your budget. Always, always, always. That's another thing we talk about in the Stunning Style Society. We do not spend outside of our budgets. If you cannot purchase it right now, then just it, wait. Just wait. Save up for it. Wait till you have the budget for it. But at least you have this list and you know what you're looking for. So when you do have the budget and you come across that item or you're out shopping, you can say, I'm looking for these, this, this, and this. Do you have it? And if they say no, then you can move along. <laughs> or if you come across it, um, you can know consciously, oh, I really did need some great black pants. And here they are. It works with my budget. This fills a hole in my wardrobe. And if you don't want to do all that work, I do the work for you. Every season I create a wardrobe guide. It, I shop the whole internet and I find 30 to 40 pieces that are cohesive. They all go together and I find all the links for you. We create a shopping portal with lots of alternates and I, create 100 outfits out of those items, put them on a calendar so you don't have to pick your outfit for the day. And that is a very much a done for you solution. It's piece by piece, outfit by outfit, guide, gator, catered to minimal classic style and a winter color palette. So there are alternates for each of the other twists and they are, um, available in the shopping portal so that you can bring in those details that you're looking for and suit your style perfectly. A capsule wardrobe is one thing that's all about you. Of course, there's plenty of room for customization when building your capsule wardrobe. Many try to narrow down their capsule wardrobe to a magic number. Personally, I don't feel the need to be that rigid when it comes to my own closet. Um, and I think each of us get to decide what that looks like. I don't have a specific number when I'm shopping each season. Like I'm not trying to make it end at a certain number. It, it's done when it feels complete and wearable and um, that there's enough utility and variety and um, just this magical balance. And, and I do the same in my own wardrobe. To me, the purpose of a capsule wardrobe is to simplify your closet, simplify your life, be intentional about what you buy and show off your signature style from season to season. And if that means you need 54 pieces instead of 33, then go for it. You might really like more variety in your shoes. Do it. The whole purpose of a capsule wardrobe is to serve you and your needs, not the other way around. So if 20 is your magic number, don't stress about adding more. Only you will know how many pieces you need for your capsule wardrobe. You can start embracing and expressing who you really are with a capsule wardrobe that's full of pieces and outfits that speak to you and about you. Armed with an understanding of what styles you love most, what pieces you look best in, and the detail guides on what outfits and pieces to wear every single day of the week, you'll look and feel better and more confident than ever before. No machete required. And if that sounds interesting to you, um, you can learn more um, and join the waiting list at stunningstyle.com forward slash society. Believe it or not, the fall guide is coming. Fall is coming. doesn't feel like it, but the fall guide is coming this month. And the uh, society is only open for a week each season. And uh, when you're on the waiting list, you will be the first to know that it's available. You don't have to follow a capsule wardrobe to enjoy the guides or to uh, join the society. It's just, it can be a standalone wardrobe if you need it to be and if you want it to be, or you can use it for inspiration for uh, existing items that you already have, new ways to wear uh, 
favorites, old favorites. And um, you can add in anything else you want to. It's not meant to be restrictive. It's meant to give you some uh, structure and framework to start from. And if you want to just stick with that, it's done. And if you want to incorporate more of what you already have, you can do that too. It's all about what works best for you. And I just wanted to quickly show you a few um, outfits from my own wardrobe that demonstrate kind of my favorites, you know? So I wear a lot of neutrals. I love all black. <laughs> Little, little leopard. That's just a favorite. I wear it a lot, but I know that about myself. And so I am honest with myself. It's what I like. And I don't feel like I have to be, um, wear more to please others. Although I used to feel like I did. This is another neutral outfit with um, an added pop of color, uh, black, white, and dark wash jeans with some burgundy added in. That's perfect for me. A little bit of pattern. That top was uh, featured in the fall wardrobe guide last year, I believe. And those flats were from the previous fall, I think. I love leopard. And these are all classic basic pieces for me. Wardrobe staples, neutrals with a pop of red. I mean, it's just what I like, but this doesn't feel boring to me at all. And here I'm wearing that same top in a casual way with the same flats that I showed you before. And this is, um, well, these are all pieces from previous guides and I, I love them. I, I, I wear them all the time, they're favorites. Combining red with a deep espresso brown is a look I love. I could wear this red with any of the neutrals in my closet. And red is one of my favorite colors to pull in. So all of my items go together because they harmonize. And occasionally I do wear something a little more colorful, like this combination, same flats once again. And um, this dress was also featured in a fall guide, I think two years ago. It's so comfortable. It's like wearing a nightgown. And this is, this is a really colorful combination, but because they're in the same color family and chroma and season, and they go together. I'll show you one more. Plaid is another pattern I really love. And um, there's that burgundy, navy, dark wash jeans with my black leather. And I love it. This is one of my, I repeat outfits all the time. And this is a favorite outfit of mine. I've worn it many, 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 many times. I could say that uh, about all these outfits. I love to repeat outfits. So 
I hope this is helpful for you. I would love to know, do you have a capsule wardrobe? Do you, are you interested in a capsule wardrobe? Do you like the idea, but you're, um, you know, you're intimidated by it? Have you tried it and, you know, thought you were bored? Like, I would just love to know what, what were your experiences with a capsule wardrobe? Kendra, let's look at the comments. This is the best part when we get to chat. Kendra says, how many colors would you suggest having a personal color palette? Well, as many as you like. Whatever you like, you don't have to limit it at all. The, the real key is just to make sure they're, they're cohesive by being part of the same color family. And that's what the seasonal, like there's so many different ways to do that. But basically your um, color palette, they'll all have um, the same undertone. Uh, and by that, I mean, well, that's a really long explanation. That's not something I can answer in two minutes, but the, there's, there's so many ways they, they harmonize, you know what I mean? They'll be cool or warm. They'll be, um, vibrant or they'll be in, in true, or they'll be, um, have more of a golden undertone. It, I, I talk about seasonal color analysis because that's what most people have heard of. Even if you don't know exactly about it, you know, what it is or you couldn't define it, we've all heard of it and we can kind of get a general idea. Like if someone says, I'm in autumn, you're like, okay, yeah, I, I see that. I can visualize what those colors look like. The colors of fall, you know, pumpkin orange or burnt orange and um, teals and, and brick red and mustard yellow, like you know, a deep pine green, you know, you can instantly, yeah, okay, I, I can kind of generally picture that. But as long as they are cohesive, you can have as many colors as you want. I have, the only color I don't have in my wardrobe is yellow, because I just never, ever wear yellow. I have every shade of blue. <laughs> blue is my favorite. Um, purple. I love purple. Red, pink, orange, green. Um, what else? Like uh, really just not yellow. I wear, I have all the colors, just some of them I have more of than than others because I wear them and crave them more often. Burgundy, I love burgundy, love it. I wear green sometimes, so I don't have as much of it. I really like purple, but it's not um, a go-to. Like I constantly seek it or I'm drawn to it, but sometimes I like it, so I wear it. So it can be as many as you want, just make sure that they go together. Angela says, this is really helpful information. Well, thank you, Angela. I'm so glad that is always my goal. So Amy had the same color. I mean, Amy had the same question about how many colors need to be chosen. So I hope that, I hope I answered that question. Patsy says, I hate black on me, but the organization, organization I belong to always wants people to dress in black. That's hard because black is not a good color for everybody. And um, yeah, I, that would be hard. Would they let you wear like navy instead? Maybe not, but that's, that is hard. And that's when you're at work, when you're outside of work though, you can choose your color palette. Angela wants to know, do you include options for plus size? Yes, we do. When, when I'm shopping for the wardrobe guide, I look for as many plus size and petite um, options as possible. And um, yeah, and in the portal you can sort by, in the shopping portal you can sort by those options. Patsy says, I have lost 100 pounds with 50 more to go. I will be starting from scratch. Patsy, congratulations. That is amazing. That's also, that's, that's just a lot of work and it takes a lot of dedication. 
And I bet you're really proud of that. That's fantastic. So you will definitely be starting from scratch. One um, really positive thing that you can uh, do for yourself is you're, you're probably, you're having to get these mini wardrobes, right? As your weight drops. And um, this is a great time for you to experiment with you do and don't love. And by the time you reach your goal weight, um, you'll know exactly what you love when you're getting your, when you're truly completely replacing your wardrobe. So um, that's something that you can have fun with in the meantime. Angela says she loves leopard too. Oh, I really do. I just cannot get enough of it. Now that I have found the right leopard for me, so I can't do like the golden undertones and things, but I found the perfect version of leopard for me. Um, one of you wants to know what lip color I'm wearing. You love the icy pink. I can't see your name. There's a link at the top. If you click it, then I can usually see your name, but otherwise it just says Facebook user. So um, I wear lip scents. This is um, two layers of pink champagne and one of violet. Julie says, I'm so late. This happens a lot. Well, Julie, we're just glad you're here. And in good news, you can watch it as soon as we're over. So we're just glad you made it. And as soon as we're done here, the replay will be available here. And then um, this will be up on my website later today. And if you're on my email list, which Julie is, um, you'll get an email letting you know that this is available. Lori says, it's hard to have all the clothes you love when you're limited to a small closet. Well, a capsule wardrobe is perfect for a small closet and it um, really makes the most of your space. And a lot of people have a small closet. And you know that we love to talk about capsule wardrobes like they're this new thing, this like revolutionary concept. Um, but it's really not. It's just how it always was until fast fashion came along and cheap clothes and we could, um, and everything became disposable. Clothes were not mass produced. They were, uh, and it was expensive. And so you had a few select pieces that you loved fit you really well and they all went together so that you could um, mix and match and get the most wearability from them and uh, then suddenly you know clothes were being mass produced and really cheap and we started buying more and more and more and more and more and um, and now we have these overwhelming closets full of more stuff than we actually wear or want to wear. So there, most of the world still follows this and it's not a thing, it just is. That's just how life is, that's just what they do. Um, let's see, one of you says, a capsule wardrobe is intimidating. I'm just now figuring out my style, shape, and season. The more I learn of these three components, the easier it is to purge my closet. It seems as if a capsule wardrobe is emerging without thinking too much about it. Perfect. And it's true. Once you really narrow down um, all those things, it's so much easier to be selective about what you include in your closet. So, um, yeah, that's, I wish I could see who said that, um, but um, it's true. It's easy to, to narrow it down that way. Audrey says periwinkle. That's a beautiful color. That is not a color that looks good on me and it's not a color I wear, but I, it, it's, it's a beautiful color. One of you says you love orange too. I know it's not a, a popular, um, 
<laughs> popular color to love. I do love it. I do love it. Like construction orange. Yes. I particularly love it in the fall. Julie says, we are so wasteful. Clothing waste is actually a huge environmental issue here and in developing countries. It's true. It's true. And fast fashion, I mean, we've talked about this so much over the last few years, but you know, the retail industry's job is to sell clothes. And so they sell clothes by inventing problems for us and then offering to solve them with new clothes. So, um, you know, they've turned on this machine uh, and they can mass produce clothes very cheaply and sell them to us very cheaply and they convince us that we need all of them and we fall for it. I'm just as guilty and susceptible as anybody else, but I will say um, I really don't shop that much uh, for myself anymore because I already love what I have. And if I see something else um, that I'm like, oh, I really love that, I will stop myself and say, but do I love it more than the one I've already got? And would I actually choose that one over the one I have? And the answer is almost always no. And so I don't get it because I know that I'll reach for the one I've got every time and prefer that one. And so I pass. Kathy says, my closet is full of different sizes. I need to open a six to 12 shop. Well, I would stick with the size you're wearing right now. You don't have to store it all. Mm, Geraldine says the fashion industry is crazy right now. The key is not to fall for it, but it's hard. It's hard. It's pushed at us from every direction and it's fun to get new things. You get that dopamine hit. The brain likes it. It's fun. We want to do it again. Um, there's so many different things that are, you know, affecting us that way. So, um, you know, don't feel like, I hope it's not coming across like uh, I'm saying we're all being simple minded. No, 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 no. There's very complex, very complex uh, things going on here with our brain, with our um, uh, body chemistry, with psychology with messages with our dna we're, we're programmed to want to belong and that is a way we can belong it's there's a lot to it it's a very conscious um effort and process not to fall for it and just being aware of what's going on Kathy says, I can't bring myself to get rid of my clothes. Well, you don't have to. If you are happy with it, then keep it. Don't ever feel like you have to get rid of something because anyone else, including me, recommends it. If it makes you happy and you want to keep it, then keep it. But if it's not making you happy and you're keeping it because you feel obligated or guilty, um, that's a different story but only do, do it when you're ready to. Okay, those are the comments that I see. I want to thank you for joining me today. And as usual, I enjoyed it thoroughly and I hope you did as well. I will be back next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And I hope to see you then too. And we're gonna talk um, a little bit more about this um, next we, we're going to talk about how many items you actually need in, in your wardrobe. So um, that is going to be the next part of our conversation. Oh, hold on. Mariah says, I'm only just now starting to get over the fear that if I use my favorite pieces in a capsule, they will wear out quickly and I'll never be able to replace it. Okay, Mariah, that is, that is, um, not an uncommon fear. You were not the first person to have that concern. And um, I have decided to just wear it, wear it and love it and enjoy it. 
and um, not come from a mentality, a scarcity mentality, which is a big shift. Like it's a, a big mental shift. Um, but just to, because you're not wearing it, so you're not enjoying it. So you're not getting any joy of it out of it now, right? So another one will come along and it can get ruined in your closet. Water, oh, somebody, one of my, one of these uh, shared another time that there was water damage. She didn't know like water was coming through the walls and her very favorite things had mold all over them and she didn't even know. And they were things that she'd been holding on to because they were too, you know, whatever to wear. And then she never actually got to wear them at all. So I've done what you've done and I've consciously stopped doing that. I just wear it and I love it and I wear it and I wear it and I wear it and I wear it. And then when it is time to replace it, I just feel confident that I will find a new one. Someone else says they have the same feeling. So it's not uncommon, but I hope you'll start to wear it. You'll get joy out of it right now. Okay, that is, <laughs> that's the last of it. These comments, there's a delay of when um, I get the comments, but that's what I see for now. So I will see you again next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I'll see you soon.